Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Emily Haller and I'm here with Ferdinando Amatrano from Intesa San Paolo and we're talking about blockchain. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. There's a strong view in the financial industry that it's blockchain, not Bitcoin, that will prove revolutionary in banking. Would you agree? Well, not really, I will say. Um, it reminds me a lot of the late 90s trend where corporate wanted to go online but not on the internet and AOL and MSN were providing such an offer which didn't make any sense at all, we now are aware of that but at the time it was kind of uh, reasonable because there were concerns about unregulated internet anonymous acres were outside this day we do know that the benefits of going online in the internet are much greater than the risk but so it might be that in a few times it will be much more recognized that blockchain with Bitcoin is what we are really looking for. Uh, if you think about Bitcoin, Bitcoin is kind of digital gold. So if you want to, to trade any kind of, we call them asset on a blockchain, but those assets are really somebody else's liabilities. And so if we have learned something in the last 60 years, is that a transactional economy which is only based on liabilities and debt is not promising enough. We do need a native digital asset which can be used as collateral. So I think that it might not be Bitcoin, but definitely a blockchain without a native digital asset. I'm pretty skeptical about it. How will the blockchain and virtual currency landscapes evolve in your view? Uh, it will be a bumpy road. I think that we are at the zenith of the hype uh, and uh, something will happen. I think we might have some delusion down the road and realize that blockchain is not really well suited to uh, answer any real problem that we have in finance. If you take a look at the narrative, in 2014 it was Bitcoin, in 2015 it was blockchain without Bitcoin, to this year it's shifting tower distributed ledger, which in my opinion are not that much different from distributed databases, replicated database with cryptographic access and commit. So next year we might be back to databases. Um, I think that blockchain technology and Bitcoin will provide some challenge to finance and we might restructure some process, some legacy process we have. If you think about algorithmic trading, so we do trade equities in nanoseconds. If we have a settlement which is in two or three days, this is not because of technology deficit. This is because of the check and balance. We do want to, to have and to rely upon. So we might have to revise you know, this kind of process. It will be a bumpy road, especially because I think uh, uh, blockchain is not really a technology is a change of a cultural paradigm shift uh, because it's really disruptive and decentralized. Uh, just to name a few, the possibility of having private money, private money without Caesar's stamp of approval, well, this is as much disruptive as you can think of. Or even uh, if you go, if you think about the miner, the Bitcoin decentralized back office, which is validating transaction, and uh, they might turn out to be the ability for any transactional network to outsource decentralized back office to this kind of anonymous users, which today are kind of scaring for us, but they might provide a new standard in security which is unrivaled these days. And uh, last but not least, you can think about the debate between privacy and transparency. Uh, probably everybody is familiar with Tim Cook not being willing to provide uh, backdoor cryptography in the iOS operating system. Uh, what that event is telling us is that in the near future all of our communication included that subset of communication, which are financial transactions, will be transparent to everybody or confidential for everybody. And uh, there will be no real possibility of providing a cryptography with a backdoor because that backdoor will be used today by FBI, but tomorrow, but eventually, but everybody else. 
And besides, it will be kind of ineffective because criminals will just use cryptography without backdoor on top of the backdoor cryptography that might be provided to every citizen out there. So I think that even this kind of debate, privacy versus transparency, might be very hot and problematic. A bumpy road for sure. So what should banks be doing right now to stay ahead of the blockchain and virtual currency developments? They should avoid doing what has been done by the music industry, which has spent most of its energies into fighting the MP3s with the end result that this day we buy liquid music from iTunes, from Google, from Amazon. We do not buy music from Sony or Universal. Okay, so I think that banks should realize that a native digital asset, which is an asset, which is not somebody's liabilities, is the building block to build, to build on the top of. I'm pretty confident there will be a blockchain beyond Bitcoin. In the same way as uh, in 92, the email was the killer app of the internet, but 20 years later we had Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, something we could not even image. I think that these days we cannot really imagine what a decentralized transactional economy based on blockchain could achieve in the future. But what I'm pretty confident about, that whatever can be achievable on blockchain will be on a blockchain with a digital native asset. Blockchain beyond Bitcoin, okay. Blockchain without Bitcoin, hmm, I'm pretty skeptical. And for bank, I think that there is an easy path. The easiest asset which requires digitization is cash. So I think that cash digi digitization uh, will be uh, the most urgent even answer to private money. If we want legal tender, fiat money, to compete with private money, we definitely need to start from its digitization. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And thank you for watching.